Okay. No, I don't hate myself. This time. Don't forget, some things mustn't be forgotten. The shadow hunting me. I must hurry. My name is Daniel. I live in London at, at uh, Mayfair. What have I done? This is crazy. Don't forget. Don't forget. I must stop him. Focus. My name is... is... I am... Daniel. Oh boy. I don't remember any of this. That's ironic. I was expecting to at least have some semblance of recognition. saying I just know I'm gonna end up accidentally hitting something from playing cyberpunk too much. Oh path. What? Wouldn't I wanna go to the opposite direction with the club? You know if I had self preservation. Fast. This guy drunk? <laughs> this is what my brain feels like when I've had way too much to drink. It happened once. I'll never do it. God! I'll never do it again. Do I want to follow the blood more or go in the room? Those doors or the cupboards? Oh, the hanging things. Let's just stay here by the fire. It's nice. But not in the direction of the. What is this? Uh. Which button? Can I drink this? I think I need it. Wait. No, this is probably why. Ooh. I thought that was a cup. Can I like... Can I... Ooh. Another one. Oh yeah, there's hiding in closets in this one. Can I steal this for armor? I need armor. Big and scary guy is big and scary guy. 
Sweep the floor, it's dirty. Okay, let's go. They're sneaking up behind me. But no. I shall hoard. Is there an anxiety meter? Is that what it is? Oh wait. Okay, if this is good, then what is it when it's bad? Uh, I really want to hit tab. reveal lootables like in cyberpunk but doesn't work here under any tinder boxes Sound is working, definitely. Oop. You have any? Can I wear this? Why am I f acting weird? Am I allergic to tender boxes? Anyone else irreparably broken by Skyrim and your incessant search for lootables? I feel like that was the gateway drug. Okay, last time I was just a room. But I'm worried about. Blood goes this way, this one's just a room. Oh, right, it was about light. Light. Yeah. Come with me, pretty. Heck. Could I have lit that? this around that's <laughs> sound is throwing me off god damn it it's on the stairs Whoop. <laughs> oh. 
Traveling to Dover meant going through the Canterbury. He meant sure to pay a visit to avoid the sense of guilt connected with the neglect of family. Books. Oh, is he freaking out because I instinctively walk closer to the wall? and making progress. I need light. Is there light in here? Enough light? Where's it coming from? There we go. What if something's up there? Oh, yummy. I don't think blood's supposed to go glow. Bleh, glow. Okay, I'm going this way. <coughs> Pulling up a tear shaped jar for what oil should look like, but I'm not sure if that's what I'm looking for. Start showing up. Am I freaking out? I mean, that's a light. Okay. This is. in case I have to hide in there. Is this where the blood stops? Oop. Ah! I was 
mostly right. I was picturing something more like this, though. 19th of August, 1839. I wish I could ask how much you remember. I don't know if there'll be anything left after I consume this drink. Don't be afraid, Daniel. I can't tell you why, but know this. I choose to forget. Try to find comfort and strength in that fact. There is a purpose. You are my final effort to put things right. God willing, the name Alexander of Brandenburg still invokes bitter anger in you. If not, this will sound horrible. Go to the inner sanctum, find Alexander, and kill him. His body is old and weak, and yours, young and strong. He will be no match for you. One last thing. A shadow is following you. It's a living nightmare, breaking down reality. I have tried everything, and there is no way to fight back. You need to escape it as long as you can. Redeem us both, dark? Daniel. Descend into the darkness where Alexander waits and murder him. Your former self, Daniel. Wait, if he's in the darkness, aren't I trying to avoid darkness? I'll switch over. <coughs> I have throat scratchies. Did it work? slammed shut behind him and he knew he would never again see the old tailor at Berkeley Square. Another lone soul in London seemed appropriate somehow. Alexander, is it inside the castle? In a manner of speaking. Come, bring the lamp. You've been to the refinery, have you not? I don't believe I have. Is it connected to the... What did you call it? The inner sanctum. My most precious chamber, Daniel. And it lies well beyond the refinery. In fact, it lies beneath the very stone of Brennenburg. Oh, it's that pebble. Is it under you? No. Maybe it's this pebble. starting to happen, so I'm gonna go this way. Box. Ooh. Will I make that noise every time I find something? Probably. It takes recording to realize just how often I do it. Can I squish a bug? Helps if I hit it. Yo! Dang it. I step on one. Damn. Blimey, there's jam covering the walls. There's a phrase I haven't heard in ages. Guess I'm going this way.
light till I feel like it. Like I have a feeling where the direction where things happen, so I could go in the opposite. The other children cheered him on. His name was voice steadily rising, peace urging him to do it. Am I really doing this? The young boy thought it was. Uh, Your knees. Oof. Lack of chemistry to properly vent the fumes from my most recent experiments has taken a toll on many of my less stable ingredients in storage. Some seem unaffected, but many are strained, stained by the fumes and will be difficult to salvage. I have to do what I can and move them to the wine cellar. this out loud or not, but the ambiance is... Mm. Uh, there should be more coop right? Let me see, let me see. And one part aqua force. I feel like flashbacks. Oop. third attempt to produce artificial vitae. The former compounds lacked the potency I need, but I sense them close. Calamine and orpiment are given and the cuprate binds them well. This time I will attempt aqua regia instead of aqua fortis in hope it will produce more even solution. The experiment was unsuccessful. The solution is highly acid and proves impractical to put any use except a detergent. Put to any use except a detergent. 
Organic tissue reacts especially violently to the solution as with a jam and should be handled with the greatest care. I might be able to use the recipe, but I'm losing hope that I'll find an alchemi alchemic solution to my predicament. <coughs> I don't have crouch. Give me crouch. Oh. You can see a sliver. Am I going to the lines? No, I didn't get a key. Was I looking for a key? Turn. If it wasn't for the thought of you, my love, I wouldn't be able to go on. When I find myself doing terrible things, I take comfort in you. As long as I'm able to think of you and long for a life together, I know I'm better than the others. I will weep for them. They lost for power without restraint, or I only crave fair judgment and a safe return. I'll try leaving. Are any of you different than the others? What about you? You're hovering. Or is it just the lighting? Oh, it's just because they don't have shadows. Take it! I'm leaving. Something's wrong. Oh, That's what I'm so saying. Thank you. 
filled with kitchen floor, tears were beginning to well in his eyes as he received the first kick in his stomach. Hazel remains hidden in fear she too would be punished. I mean the cut screen cut nah, I mean the cut scenes are being tripped, so I must be doing something right. Can I try anyways? Something that would pull the things off. That sounds like a haunted loon. Archives. I don't remember these. I'll go this way. Fra fragrant taste of rose lingered in his mouth. Turkish delights, he thought. And I didn't read all that one because I stopped for a drink. <sighs> I'm gonna go in the room that I can see. 16th of May, 1839. The unflinching African sun has continued to plague our expedition, making it impossible to dig until dusk. How Professor Herbert managed to find the location in these vast plains of nothingness remains a mystery to me. When I asked him about the tomb again, he told me about the legend of Tin Hanan, the mother of us all. An interesting story in its own right, but I can't help feeling there's more. Later that evening, we uncovered a passage beneath the dunes leading to a sand-covered stone structure. The professor was confident it was the tomb we sought and ordered the others to clear the way late into the dark, cold night. Tomorrow, I shall lead the men into the ancient structure, hoping to reach the burial chamber. No matter what the professor is keeping from me, the dig should yield something interesting to take back to London and the British Museum. I feel like there's something about a head. Another chair in the way. I hereby offer my full attention and services to Alexander, Baron of Brennenburg. This contract will reign for a total of three years when my freedom shall return to me. In addition to Alexander, Baron of Brennenburg is to recommend my services at the Prussian Royal Court within, within the sanctum of the Order of the Black Eagle. May no man break the seal. Wil Wilhelm House of Gerich. Same hallway. Okay. Uh. Look, the 
that's why. Catalogs. Birds? Didn't sound nice. Seventeenth of May, eighteen thirty nine. My hands tremble as I write. I feel a need to document my tribulation, for I fear that my memory will fail me if I linger. Today, I took some men and ventured into the dark, ancient passage we uncovered. Our torches burned faintly in the murky air as we slowly made our way underground. The men were superstitious and fearful. They argued loudly, and I felt their strange language getting to me. I mustered my strength and yelled at them to continue down the slopes and broken steps. The crudely carved passage confused me. It looked much older than the fourth century structure we had expected. The twisting path emerged into a great antechamber. The walls were lined with statues unlike any I'd ever seen. Despite their unearthly quality, I felt a strange familiarity toward them, which haunts me still. At the far end of the chamber, a great slab of stone sealed off whatever lay ahead. I gave the order to raise it. And as I pushed through the narrow space, the heavy stone suddenly dropped, sealing me inside. I was trapped. Ow. Whoever comes through here next is going to hate putting all the drawers back in. Oh my gosh! Oh. Two. I'm just gonna start making a mess. Just explode. Old tones. This place doesn't sound haunted at all. back this way. Into the open room. Watch the light go out. Never mind, it's coming from a window. Oh, the piano. just was like this to... yes Oh 
Another key. Or does it open as you progress? Don't like that. I'm gonna throw a rock at the guy. Stand in the light for a minute. Oh, those aren't full fills. Okay. Gonna be a little need to be a bit more careful with those. Should reinforce weak structures. The ground will tremble, and there's a risk everything will cave in on us, especially downstairs. Here, here, and there. Let's get the servants working on it. Both these voice actors would make great vampires. That's not what I was expecting. Heck. Light. Unforgiving stone wall for what seemed like an eternity, I realized it was hopeless. I was trapped. I fell to the ground, gasping for air, trying to focus. That's when I saw a faint blue shimmer. My weakened body was heavy to carry, but I managed to push myself toward the enchanting light. waiting for something to happen. It was waiting for me. Enclosed in dark nothingness, I felt myself drawn to the mystic light. I 
I reached out, closing it in my hands. The faint glow escaped my fingers and began to spark brightly and spirit me away, unlocking alien memories of spiraling towers, endless deserts, and impossible geometry. The next thing I can remember is the grating sound of stone being lifted, the voices of the Arabs pulling me to safety, and grasped firmly in my hands was the broken pieces of a most peculiar relic. Okay, but where is it? another way out. somewhere. I don't think I saw any. That was closed. I know because I closed it. Oh well. Must find a way out of this area. You don't say. Can I break the wall with the door? Ah! Right, man. Ah. I'm a genius! Uh oh. You have to be swift when you activate the first one. You hear that? If it stops, you'll have to start over. Isn't all this a bit excessive? You no. can never be too careful, Dad. Elstad and Brennenberg Castle, 1801. Another region rich with lore is Altstad, deep within the East Prussian woods. For centuries there have been stories surrounding the hamlet and its neighbor, Castle Brennenberg. The quiet forest-clad mountains dressed with scattered lakes is as picturesque as can be, albeit the area is haunted by the dark. By the dark. Ask any local and you will hear proof of the widespread superstition. All travelers should indulge themselves in such conversations since it will certainly serve as exciting entertainment. All of them have their own twists on the tales, but there are some motifs, mo motifs that keep reappearing. That's a breakthrough. Oh, <laughs> the chair. Yeah. I wish I thought of that. Door. That 
where I'm going. Oil. Heck. It's one of you. Right? It's usually a book. No? Okay. Book. You're a weird looking book. Yay! Oh, there's more than one, right. Um, I'm wasting a torch. on the inside. leave one of the closet doors open. Wilhelm and his fools have endangered my research long enough with their absent-minded handling of the human vessels. Vessels? The sheriff is keeping a watchful eye on the forest and is killing my trusty servants. It's just a matter of time until they follow the trail to Brennenburg. I need to lock Wilhelm and his men up to avoid further investigation from the public. The wine cellar will therefore be sealed off until the matter has been handed, handled. There should be the wine key, I guess. Either the king's men leave, or they will starve. Whatever comes first, they can rot for all I care. Maybe we'll feed them some wine. It would, in sense, solve both of my problems. Uh-oh. I'm still trapped in the side of the building, aren't I? No, there's a door over here. Okay. I've been here. Do I want to go back through the hole? Oh wait, no, I'm going to the wine cellar. I don't remember what direction that was. Can I get in here yet? No. This game is good at what it does. It's got the whole sound. BS sounds and effects down to it. Creep. 
Creep. <coughs> Creep factor times 9,000. I don't remember the exit. Is this it? Yes. Yet. The sand gave way to his tired body as he fell from the camel's back. He felt the wind gently sweep across his face and drive hard shapes. At least I assume that's what the last three words were. Shit! Desert dunes were like waves in a sluggish sea, while the caravan moved, the land appeared motionless. But in camp, the hills moved. automatically closing doors. Do 
I climb? I don't remember climbing in this game. <laughs> yeah, I got knocked in the face. Maybe if I throw a rock at it. This isn't a rock. When I throw a chair at it. Eh. Oh! My name is Wilhelm, Health House of Garage. These are my final words, my confession and testament. Two years ago, I was summoned to the castle Brennenburg. As most of the aristocracy, I was curious about what this supposed knight of the order would want from me and accepted the invitation. The Baron was friendly and offered me a proposition. It dawned on me that the nature of the contract was sordid and that the reason I was chosen was because of the follies of my past and not the honors I've been rewarded with during my time as a soldier. I was to kidnap healthy humans upon his slightest whim and do so without asking questions. In return, he would attest to my character at the royal court, advancing my position within noble, so noble society. I would like to claim that I struggled with my decision, but it came swiftly and I accepted wholeheartedly. Ever since that day, I've brought men, women, and children to Brennenburg. I can't remember the numbers, but there were many, perhaps even a hundred. 
none of whom were ever seen or heard from again. You'd think people would notice. Tonight, the Baron invited me and my men down to the wine cellar to celebrate our work. I had my suspicions as we descended the stairs, but he insisted and joined us in a toast. The wine tasted fine, and my men drank with it was drained. So begins the punishment for our sins. The Baron was has locked us up and returned upstairs. Forgive me for what I have done. I was weak and fell into his diabolic ways. My men are screaming. Their skin has been pierced by their own tangled bones. I feel my insides revolt against their God-given nature. Blood has begun to pour from my eyes and I can no longer dot dot dot. I'm gonna have to hide in a closet soon. Where am I going? Do I? I only have four. That's a great hint to get. Knock, knock. I hate the ambient walking sound. <laughs> or something. Seems like an excessive amount of rocks. torches, but also I want to hide. <laughs> Close the doors behind me. I don't think I saw a note. He sat down by the casbo with wall gasping for air. Heck. Uh. 
It's angry. Ow. Jump. What the? Maybe it was this way. Heck? Is it this way? I can go check. You know, unless the door is locked. It might have been one of the bottles. Or this corner. any more notes over here. It might have just been the light hitting the glass over there. I don't mind going back to check. I like the finding all the story notes. Cloth smelled of desert and damp musk. The pieces lay scrambled on top. Too many of them, he thought, or perhaps too few. a monster somewhere? Boing. No. Maybe it wasn't that way. I already forgot where the chemical room is. This was not it. No. Uh oh. You mean I missed something on a shelf? Heck. Give me all the loot. Hopefully it's a tinderbox. That stuff sounds so gross. The statues were praying, gazing into a dark, doomed ceiling. I haven't played this since Machine for since before Machine for, for Pigs came out. Something. Is there anything in here? Go 
the spare tender boxes. They seem really light. I guess they did drink all the wine. hitting it, or throwing it over my head. Maybe I shouldn't do that. The heck is that? It's like a switch. Turn to the cellar at some point and then it triggers? Maybe? The hole in the ceiling? The one where I blocked the door? Footfalls. This way? Heck. Crouch was. Uh. No, I'm not falling for that. I'll just let it leave on its own. <laughs> I 
just face the wall and hope it doesn't see me. Possible to vote if bleh. well, I'm not gonna read that now. Tripped over too much. Okay. Don't jump. He's got bad knees. Is anyone there? No. No door. Okay. Stop vibrating. Decides which one it is itself. you say. Thank you. 
be an easier way. Boxes. Jumping on these doesn't knock them over. Probably helps if I put them in line with the spot, though. Is there a baby in the walls? So close. Heck, eh, good enough. Not good enough. Don't knock it down. Woo! Boing. Boing. Yay! Sat down by the Caswell wall, gasping for. Oh, I read this one already. I think. And nope, that didn't hurt. Take it. Okay, that didn't hurt. Achievement unlocked! Alchemist! for it. But you can light the lamp now if you wish. What's the reason? For the darkness, that is. Stay close. Be careful not to stray. What's the reason? Why is it so dark? Pay attention, Dandel. It's important that you keep going straight and make sure not to stray. didn't try.
stealth. I am the knight. I say another lantern. Was it sanity or actually something there? Can I throw a box at it? I'm gonna go this way. Tender boxes? I used all mine. Yes. Come on. Ha. Second of June, 1839. It's been more than a month since my last entry. Oh yay. After the event inside the underground chamber in Algeria, Professor Herbert insisted I return to England. He said he didn't want to risk forfeiting the entire expedition lest I took a turn for the worse. An excessive decision in retrospect. But I'm glad it turned out that way. I found my journal this morning in the haphazard collection of things brought home from Africa. Next to it lay the broken stone orb wrapped in cloth. I tried to assemble it, but couldn't. The pieces wouldn't fit together, as if they weren't from the same object. Could I have imagined it all? Was there ever a complete orb? collecting the stone shards for the Shikan Otama now. Rude. Oh look, a hole. The lit thing. Nope, just sanity.
is your food an hour early? Oh, big stretch. Hi. Uh, I don't remember where I've been. I'm pretty sure it was this way. Yeah, I was going this way. The thing went that way. What a leg. That looks like a leg. Where did the thing go? Oh! Every time I get to a note! of June 1839. I feel the need to continue this journal even though it was intended for my journey to Africa. This must be something very important. I just know it. I've taken it upon myself to piece the orb back together but it's been more difficult than one might think. The pieces are behaving strangely. They seem to change color, shape, and texture, but ever so slightly. Yesterday, I took careful measurements and notated any significant markings. Today, I confirmed my suspicions. They were changing. I was terrified and rushed off to see the finest geologist in London, Sir William Smith. I approached the subject with care and we discussed how rocks change form. He told me about the nature of glass how it eventually collapses on itself, like ice slowly melting over the course of centuries. Smith eased my mind a bit, but I can't escape the feeling that these shards have otherworldly properties. They exist in other dimensions. Stay in the light where things can see me. It's unacceptable. Crashed through the surface, the dark, dark Atlantic water. I was doing good for a while. <clears throat> I 
didn't realize I was crouched either. Oh. Can I not be in water, please? Oh! Don't like that.
Why am I bad at this? We're getting the hit shift. There we go. Uh, heck. Pig. That looks like a pig.
Oh yay, body parts. can ask, act as a distraction. Yeah, so can boxes. Okay. Go that way. Extraordinaire. Something large brushed against his leg, and he felt himself being dragged alone by the current of the beast. He pushed himself above the surface. Help, he cried, as the ocean swallowed him again. More water!
felt himself being hoisted out of the ocean. The lacquered hull of the SS Hortensia glittered in the soothing, warm yellow light of the setting sun. He turned his head to the calm open reaching towards the coast of Portugal. Coast of Portugal? God damn it. Oh, I'm out of the water. That likes. Ugh. What a face. Guess I'm going this way. You have an ascending room. Will it take us to the inner sanctum? It will definitely take care of the vertical part of our journey. So, you have ridden an elevator before? Yes, the Colosseum at Regent's Park has one. Well. It takes you to the gallery where you can view the panorama. Good. This ride might be a little longer. And in the other direction. That guy has a great voice. I know it's supposed to be ominous, but that's my favorite flavor. The course is locked. I'm gonna check the other rooms first. They're probably locked, but... Another dream, he thought, and then screamed at the top of his lungs. It's not ominous at all. I'm pretty sure I remember hiding behind that wall at some point.
Yeah, I'm gonna go upstairs first. The walls are alive other places, but that one feels like the air is alive. <laughs> wrapped in rope, the lock had been broken by thieves, he assumed. He wondered if anything had been left considering all the hands that had passed. My journal is gone. What would they want with my journal? July 1839. I received a letter today from the Algerian governor's office disclosing the fate of Herbert's expedition. About a week after my departure, Abdullah, one of the men traveling with us, returned from the desert. He was badly injured, as if maimed by a lion. The man rambled deliriously about the expedition being attacked by something horrible. The French quickly dispatched a search party to look for the expedition. After searching for days, they found the camp abandoned without any trace of Herbert or his men. Tomorrow, I'll retrieve the things they recovered from Herbert's tent at the customs house. I don't know what to make of it, but I'm worried for him. Hear him beside me. Ooh. Some of this is starting to look familiar. Third of July, eighteen thirty nine. Today I picked up Herbert's things at the customs house. I dug through the trove of documents he had carried and found a log detailing the expedition. The nature of this text ranged from quick notes to colorful accounts of transpired events. I skimmed the pages trying to figure out what might have happened. May 17th, the day I was trapped inside the orb chamber, Herbert dryly states, we covered Daniel after one hour of entrapment. This confused me greatly. I was suffocating within minutes. How could I have lasted an hour? I continued reading the peculiar text. Herbert states his facts without judgment or passion. 
but suddenly I could read frustration into his text. He pushed his men to investigate the underground tomb, an effort which seems to have strained the minds of his men. Madness spread through the ranks, and Herbert had to take some extreme measures to continue. He finally visits the chamber himself, where he retrieves the orb to the surface. His account confuses me greatly. If he has the orb, what are those pieces in my drawing room? I was only gonna go till like six, but it's six thirty now. Noisy oh, ass cockroaches. Oh, I can throw these too. <laughs> Fourth of July, 1839. It's done. The orb is assembled. I was awakened by an exhausting nightmare. Shaking and sweating, I retired to the drawing room with a cup of tea. The relic pieces lay spread across the table as I'd left them. But somehow, I knew how it was supposed to be. I fetched the tar, which I had prepared to fix the pieces together, and without fault I joined them, producing the orb I remembered so clearly. The tar proved unnecessary. It was pushed out from the joining pieces as they merged on their own, with no adhesive. The ancient stone relic now rests on my table. Its immaculate surface and perfect shape could have been molded by a factory. This is all too strange. Doctor Strange. Oh. Ooh. Click. Thank you. ass cockroach. He panted heavily, trying his best to keep himself from screaming. The medicine cabinet had been overturned and lay collapsed on the floor. He reached through the broken glass door and grabbed all the sedatives he could find. Smith had been marked, there was no way for him to know that the young man from the other day cast such a terrible shadow. Yay, more halls! Sir. Where can I set you that I can see you? Uh. That sounds like a dog.
bitch where? There we go. Dang it. Letter regarding the discovery of an orb. To my most trusted student and friend, Joanne Weyer, the most remarkable thing has happened. As I was traveling through the Prussian woods this summer, I finally found one of the orbs. Why does it get so loud? I've been looking for the last 20 odd years. It is as inexplicable as the Heliodromus described it in the Hortus Conclusus. It was as it was told about an underground Mithraic temple crowned with the unearthly, unearthly artifact. The orb was big enough to fill my cupped hands and the texture was smooth and jagged. Those are two different things. It's color washed while rich. Oh, so it's opposites. Contrast is not enough to describe its nature. It was an impossibility, an artifact, art, art, artificial paradox captured within stone. I was staying in a nearby village called Altstad, investigating one of the antiquated trails when I finally found the cavern. I went inside and suddenly I could verify the truth of these enigmatic artifacts. They were real. As you can understand, this is the most important discovery of my life, but it has also become my greatest fear. As I encountered the underground chamber, I could feel that I was trespassing. Because of my curiosity, I did my best to fight these instincts and fetch the orb from its place. I scrambled out of the chamber and into the woods. I could sense something was following me. It bathed loudly as I closed it, or as it closed in. The beast, this guardian of the orb, was relentless in its pursuit. I made my way to a nearby ravine where I stumbled upon some men fishing in the lake. I tried to warn them as I passed, but fortunately they remained as I continued my escape. When I heard their cry of pain echoed through the valley, I felt such a tremendous, tremendous sense of relief thinking I would be spared. Suddenly a blue shimmering light engulfed me and the colors of the forest were washed away before my eyes. I kept running through the bleak surroundings. The trees had turned charcoal. Charcoal black with leaves of cinder. The ground covered in murky water. I pressed on through the drenched land as the glowing ember gave way to the rising wind and rained on me. I could hear pleading screams in the distance and I joined in as pain and fear overtook me. I fell to the ground gasping for air. That certainly must sound strange, but I had been- How long is this? This certainly must sound strange, but I had been carried miles away across the Alps to a grassy field outside Genoa. The Guardian had taken the orb from me, but still, until this day, I fear its return. Sometimes I lay awake at night, listening for the howling cry I heard in the forest. It has been nearly a decade since that day, and I still haven't been able to write about the incident. The last time we spoke, you told me about your interest in ongoing research into the mythic orbs, and I realized I owed you the truth about my visit to Altstad. Your friend and mentor, Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa. I do recognize that name from somewhere. Just a minute. Guess this is where I save an exit. Time for food. Thanks for keeping me company. Um, and stuff. Like and subscribe. Blah, blah, blah. Bye.